everyone, and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with one of my regulars, my good old friend Jolene. Hello! Welcome back. It, as always, it's, it's good to be back. Yeah, now, now you're one of the two people that norm, like regularly come back now. It's, it's just uh -huh. you and Minho now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, I still have Gummy and Phillip, but that, I mean, I only have four people now. But I'm glad you're one of them. <laughs> Aw, that's very nice of you. No problem, man. I got you, G. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the spirit of uh, the Law X Reader that we read and enjoyed and cried about, and we're like, hey, yo, uh, <laughs> in the spirit of that, the wheel <laughs> has, <laughs> has graced us. With a different law book, except it's not an X reader. It's a ship between him and and, and kid. We've read this before. Good old uh, very Lord, long ago. Yeah, lords and crimes. Oh, criminals. Oh, fuck. <laughs> lords and crimes. <laughs> I don't even know this. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading it too. I had it right there in front of me. <laughs> I'm dying. I can't read. Oh god, well, yeah, Lord I. I think we'll be able to finish this all in this episode. But Maybe, we'll just... Yeah, we'll see. No promises. <laughs> but from what I remember, in a quick recap, if you don't want to rewatch the video, uh, we- Law is a thief, but Kid is most definitely a thief. And Killer was with him, and then he moved out, and then Law moved in, and they might have a bromance going on, which might turn into an actual romance, and then they they have, like, a, this briefcase that's important, and then they mugged a lady that has this very important jewel that's only given to Dolphamingo's wives, which I didn't think anyone wanted to get laid with him, but, like, I guess when you're the king, you can just do whatever you want, and uh, they got an even bigger target on their heads. That's all I remember. Isn't... <laughs> I'm pretty- uh, I don't remember if it was this thick. I'm pretty sure it's this thick. We're- Killer. It's- Killer's like hooking up with Penguin. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that! Side- Side plot. Yeah. I love it. We're like, how the fuck did this happen? And we're just like, uh. Oh. I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. Do yeah. With killer. <laughs> Alright, uh, didn't I have a penny next to me? I do! Alright, do you want to be Hunter Tails? Oh gosh, I'll be tails this time. Oh shit, I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> I know that. That, it has spoken. It is spoken. Oh shit, Can't it's tails. It now. <laughs> oh, good. oh shit, I was ready. <laughs> well, well, you said so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's faded. It's faded. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, you Go ahead, man, you got this. I'm gonna- I don't even remember how to read. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Kid and Law sat on the couch, while Killer paced back and forth before them. As he was about to speak, he clicked his tongue and started pacing again. Killer leaned against the- Penguin leaned against the, the couch, waiting for Killer to speak. You wanna to talk to them privately? Penguin suggested. Please, Killer said. Penguin and Kid went to his room and shut the door. Can you tell me how drunk he is? Penguin asked. Kid shrugged. Pretty. Law. He... He's a lot to handle. For instance, he's sleepwalk, he'll wind up in your bed, so don't be surprised. By this point, Kid tuned him out. Not that he wanted to, he was just too drunk to understand. Once Penguin, Penguin finished, Kid snapped back into it again. Do you understand? He asked. Kid nodded. Penguin sighed in relief. One more thing. Whatever you do, you cannot wake him up. He nodded once more as Penguin felt they got their talk up through to him. But it really didn't. Kid literally fell back and fell asleep. He started awake in the middle of the night with shifting in his bed. He glanced up to Law, straddling his hips, staring <laughs> down at him. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> I, I was not prepared. He glanced at- oh. Kid stiffened as he clutched the bed. Law turned away, climbing out of bed and went to the kitchen. Kid followed as he watched Law scramble to the kitchen, going drawer, through drawer after drawer. 
Khorasan. Law muttered. Law, are you okay? Kid answered. His words had fallen upon deaf ears. Kid turned on a light as Law continued to open drawers in the kitchen. Kid went into the kitchen and reached out to him. Don't touch him! Kid pulled back as Penguin staggered up from the living room. Law turned and headed out of the kitchen. Coruscant, he muttered. Kid, go back to bed. I'll take care of Law, Penguin said. Kid, Law muttered. They turned to Law standing in the middle of the living room. He was staring at Kid, sending a chill up his spine. Killer got up on the couch as Law approached Kid. He reached out inches away from Kid's chest. Shambles, he muttered. Law muttered. Law slumped. Kid caught him just before he hit the floor. Penguin approached him, placing a hand on his forehead. He looked up to Kid. Here, come lay him on the floor. I'll sleep with him tonight, Penguin said. I'm his roommate. Tell me what I have to do, Kid said. Penguin smiled. Just do what you're doing now. Law said your name so he trusts you, or maybe even more. You're gonna have to let him sleep with you. I'll explain in the morning. I'm gonna hold it right here because I see there's seven comments. There's se hold on, hold on. I gotta look at this. Penguins, thing. This seems shady. Oh, sleeping with them. Oh, <laughs> I love all the little fly smirk. Yeah. That wasn't what I anticipated, but you know. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> it's it's so funny seeing like they like them be slightly gay, and then like there's a million comments being like, "That's really gay of them to do." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sir, ma'am, you're reading a gay fan fiction. Of course, there's gonna be gay moments. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if like you're reading like. When there's like magic, like one of those mafia books, and then you're like, oh my god, he's he's a mafia man. He's the, oh my god, <laughs> is that me? Oh my god, he's in the mafia. <laughs> he's got he's a mob boss. <laughs> Not the mob boss. So what is the boss? you literally click on it because he's like a mob boss. <laughs> That's like he's the. Not it. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, keep going. Is that like no, when keep you're... going. Keep going. What's what? It's like he, like he's a ten, but things like if I presented you like he's a ten, but he's a mob boss, you'd just be like, yeah, he's that, still a ten. <laughs> Is he available? <laughs> be available. Yeah, do you know him? <laughs> yeah, do you have his number? Yeah, yeah, and for a friend, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I gotta take someone out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's gotta take me out, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. I'm good. Kid nodded as he took Law into his room, putting him on the other side of his bed before climbing in himself. He turned to Law sleeping soundly next to him. Kid reached out to touch him, but he pulled back and tossed over. He wasn't gonna let Love win. He'd fight as much as he could, but Kid glanced over to Law before he turned away. He was moving badly. Once he woke up the next morning, he turned over to Law, snuggled close. He had a small smile on his lips when he rested on Kid's chest. He chuckled, running a hand through Law's hair. Law smiled more as he nuggled against his hand. Kid stopped once he realized what he was doing, having Law frown and wake up. He sat up and turned to Kid. What are you doing in my room, Law? You're in my room, Kid went. Law looked around before he pursed his lips and turned back to Kid. Why'd you drag me in here? Law asked. Penguin told me you needed a snuggle buddy. Kid <laughs> Sorry. Law, Law pinched his nipple, twisting it, having Kid cry out in pain. The redhead tapped, tapped out, having Law pulled back. Kid ha held his nipple and glared up at it. That hurt! I was trying to help! You scared the fuck out of me last night, Kid said. Law perked up to this and turned him. I didn't do anything last night. I went to bed and I woke up here. No, you didn't. I woke up with you staring at me while you straddled my hips. I swore you are going to kill me. Don't even bother, kid. Law doesn't believe you sleepwalk. Someone <laughs> said. Law groaned, crawling out of bed. He's on it, too? Law, no one is in on anything. You really do sleepwalk. Penguin said. He shook his head and walked out of the room, with Penguin's side pinching the bridge of his nose. Kid stretched and rolled his shoulders. I guess I owe you an explanation, Penguin said. 
Penguin and Kid sat down while Law went off to his room. Penguin explained that when his father was killed, Law had been acting strange. Penguin assumed it had been some kind of trauma, but this lasted longer than he expected. What? Is this, like, trauma I got, like, a little period? Like, oh, shoot, I could only have this trauma for two years. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's an expiration day. Once, once that expiration day, you don't have trauma anymore. Yeah, guys, my trauma ends 6 4 27 Damn. No, wait. 25. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> that was going to be like sucks. three years ago. <laughs> uh, so he didn't know how this was caused. Kid looked at Law's door. He crossed his arms, glancing back to Penguin. Law doesn't believe he's sleepwalk, Kid asked. No, or has night terrors, which don't happen anymore, but still don't get it. Kid sighed. Do you think Doflamingo has something to do with it? Possibly. The idea comes across the the idea comes across my mind before. He turned to Law's room, where Law sat on the other side of the door, clutching his arms. He bit his lip, burying his head between his knees. I wish I'd tell you, Law muttered. Later that night, Kit, Killer and Penguin left, leaving Kid and Law alone. Law stayed in his room, sitting by the door. His cheeks wet, sniffling softly into his dark room. Kid pulled on his coat. Law, I'm going out to grab some stuff at the door. You want anything? Kid called. I'm fine. Law said back. Kid adjusted his coat inside. He opened the door as the figure darted down the stairs. He watched as he as he jumped down a flight of stairs. Thora darted down the hall and jumped up. Stop. To the stairs. Kid and Zoro watched as Sanji glanced up at them, holding bags of groceries. He looked around before, looking back up at them. Did you- Did a guy dressed in darks run past you? Zoro said. Kid watched Sanji- Yeah, Sanji's hand on his bag is slightly. No. <laughs> Zoro growled, turning back down the hall and headed back up the stairs. Sanji rolled his eyes and headed up past Kid. Their eyes locked for a moment before Sanji went to his apartment. Kid leaned up against the railing. So, why do you do it? Kid asked. Sanji's... Sanji's hand on his feet was clutched. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you guys are doing some kind of foreplay? Can you keep it, <laughs> it in your own apartment? Sanji tossed a can of mangoes at his head before going into his apartment. Kid clutched. Kid chuckled, going down, down, bleh, going down to the gas station to get some snacks, picking out some chips and a soda and a cheesy horror film movie he and Law might like. He bought them and headed home, but when he got halfway there, he got an odd feeling he was being watched, until there was a sharp pain in his shoulder and now everything went slow. There was loud gunfire and he turned his shoulder to find his coat starting to soak with his own blood. He noticed a tall man holding a gun. Then the glint in his sunglasses. You must be kid, he chuckled. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> I think Duel Flamingo has shot kid. I think that's what's happening. Damn. Now I, I have to read. He found out that, you know, <laughs> him and Law. Him and Law, he, they be fuck. I mean, they stole something. <laughs> <laughs> they. Be. Well, I mean, what? That's crazy. I didn't say anything. <laughs> You're crazy. Alright, bullet. Crazy? I was crazy once. <laughs> Before I get into the rat thing. <laughs> Kid clenched his shoulder as the man lowered his gun. He gave a low chuckle. He put his gun back on his belt. Kid staggered back, grinning his teeth as the pain in the shoulder grew hot and throbbing. Just like another thing later on in this book. But anyway, the man chuckled. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just seen his feather. <laughs> <laughs> just like all the others who took in my son, they all fell. <laughs> I forgot his laugh, thank God. <laughs> Kid chuckled, glancing up at him. Well, I'm not like the others. You must be Joe Flamingo. You fucked up law. <laughs> And what are you gonna do about it? In this current state, 
nothing. But once I'm healed, we'll go turn over your city, Joe Flamingo. He grinned his teeth, flicking his fingers over his gun. Do Flamingo! <laughs> they turned to a figure in the distance behind him. Do Flamingo's frown grew, soon turned into a grin. As he, oh, I forgot he doesn't walk right. As he waddled over to the <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah, he walked. I, I saw a man at the convention dressed up as Do Flamingo, and he was walking just like he does in the anime. I'm like, wow, what a trooper. <laughs> I, he was really into it. Yeah. Which convention? I think it was the at July Galaxy. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was he was he was just straight up came into the bit, and I'm like, you know what, admirable man, you you walk that. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, kid watched as Zofamingo slid on the pink ring onto the other man before they walked off. Pink ring. Okay. Oh, I think the pink <laughs> ring, like a, like the actual jewelry ring. Oh, like the, wait a minute, is it like that that one that the lady had or no? I don't remember. Oh shit! I guess we'll figure out if it's a gay thing later. I guess. <laughs> oh my god! It's always a gay thing. <laughs> Kid grunted as he went back home, blood dripped down onto the carpet and up the stairs. Not the new carpet. We just got that washed! <laughs> Kid grunted, opening the door. Law perked up from the couch as Kid slumped on the floor. Law scrambled up, and his eyes widened to the small pool of blood on the floor in front of the door. Damn it! Law grunted. He grabbed an arm around his shoulder and dragged him over to the table. He swept everything off and onto the floor before pulling Kid up. And onto the table. I'm actually really impressed that Law can do this because I thought like Law's like a twink build and like <laughs> Kid has like all these muscles, so I'm really surprised. Anyway, <laughs> Law scrambled. <I'm> so <laughs> Come on, have you ever like you, you, you seen them side by no, side? No, I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen when Law was first introduced. He was a stick. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm. I got visions. <laughs> Law scrambled into the kid. <laughs> Getting a knife, he turned back to Kid, clenching his shoulder again. Stop touching it. You're going to make it worse. Oh, you're going to make I worse. Law barked. He went up to Kid, cutting off his shirt and rolling up his coat and shirt off his shoulder. Kid watched as Law muttered to himself as his dark eyes flicked over the wound. Then Law bolted to his room. Kid sat up as Law came out with a black bag. He jumped over the couch, setting the bag down before going to the closet and pulling out towels. While climbed onto the table, straddling Kid's hip. Sir, this is this is surgery. <laughs> his dark eyes glanced at Kid before his tattooed hand pushed him down onto the table. La opened the bag, pulling out latex gloves. What the hell are you doing? Kid cried. Do you want me to save you or not? La asked. What are you going to do? Just trust me. Like I trust you. Kid sighed as Law rummaged through his bag and pulled out a needle. He tore it open before pulling out a bottle of anesthetic and piercing the silver foil. Law drew back the needle as it was filled with clear liquid. Do I have to have a shot? Kid asked. Oh, you don't want scared of a little shot. <laughs> Kid growled as Law chuckled. He leaned over him and- Whoa, what the fuck, sir? <laughs> Whoa, this is not huh? the time! Huh? It just says kiss them, but I'm like, why? You're in the middle Bro, this man's been shy! <laughs> just sh Yeah, this man has a bullet in him right now! Oh, and he kissed him. Sure. Why? Whoa. No Press way. Pressing the needle in his neck. Why would you put it in his neck? I thought he got shot in the arm! I'm so confused. <laughs> Kid didn't have to take it. Way. Yeah, I I thought when you're supposed to numb an area, you're supposed to go around it and whatnot, so it numbs that specific area, unless he's knocking him out, mm -hmm. but still. Why the neck? There's the arm. The arm's a good place to knock someone out with, and it, like, in whatever. Especially if they've been shot in the arm. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> it's okay. Kid We're not doctors. Yeah, thank god. <laughs> Kid didn't hesitate to kiss back until he started to slow and then completely stop. Good. Law pulled back and pulled out the needle. 
kid was knocked out. Law set down the needle as he rummaged through his bag for tweezers and some needle and thread. He took a breath, wiping away the blood, and started to dig into the kid's shoulder. Law growled, struggling to get the bullet out. Once he did, he set it away before starting to stitch up the kid. Law pierced his skin with the needle and pulled the string through before repeating four more times. He smirked at his work, then applied a bandage to the stitches. Law climbed off the table, removing his gloves and tossing away his gloves and the needle. He closed his bag and looked at the bullet. Don't flamingo. Law muttered. He turned to Kid and helped him to his bed. Law covered him up and sat next to him. He sighed, taking Kid's hand. So romantic. I am with a few other roommates. They weren't as strong as you or as reckless, but you are different. The reason why I'm telling you this is that I can get it off my chest. I wish I could tell you that while why I sleepwalk or had night terrors was because Doflamingo shot my father right in front- Oh, damn. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, he is dead. No. Well, does he mean What's his actual day? father or Corazon? They, they mean. They mean. Okay. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was able to have a healthy life until Doflamingo just like- just snatched him up. <laughs> Dude, Flamingo, uh, why would you- why would you shoot your- your nephew's roommate? <laughs> roommate's in air quotes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully before you awake tomorrow morning, I'll be gone, so you don't have to go through this again, Law said. Law pressed his hand on his forehead, tears running down his cheek. In all my years, I haven't had this much fun with anyone. Kid groaned. Law snapped his head up to Kid, who cupped his cheek. Kid, I... Sorry. He st stood, starting to leave when Kid grabbed his wrist. He hissed, holding his shoulder. Law turned to him, snapping his hand away. You'll pull your stitches out. Don't move around so much, Law barked. Kid chuckled, sitting back on his pillow. I always thought love was stupid and I'd be... and it'd make you weak. But, after these few days, it helped me realize it makes you stronger. Now you're just being cheesy, Law smirked. Kid growled, having Law chuckle. He stood, turning out the lights. I better let you rest, Law said. I'll just- you'll just end up in my bed anyway, so... Stay here, Kid said, smooth. <laughs> Law sighed. If he didn't, Kid would drag him in anyway. Then pull out his stitches. Then Law would have to restitch him. Fine. Only so you don't have to get up for anything in the middle of the night, Law said. Kid chuckled as Yeah, Kid chuckled as Law tossed away his shirt and crawled into bed. He lied in uncomfortable silence until Kid made his losing shot against Love. Will you be my partner in crime? Kid asked. <laughs> that is cringy. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I... Law snapped open his eyes and rolled into his back to look at Kid. His amber eyes already staring into Law's dark gray. Just as dark gray. Alright. Law was caught off guard, seeing Kid too, too soft, having his guard down, not rude, spitting, or glaring at anything. Law saw... The soft side of Kid no one ever knew existed. Law's lips spoke before his mind could. Kid broke out in a blush as Law blushed back and tossed over to his side. Of course. I love you, Law whispered. Beppo noticed the door was open and poked his head out. He strolled out of the apartment, smelling something like meat. Wait, he's outside. Wait, no, not the polar Wait, bear! Huh? He's leaving! <laughs> He just left. <laughs> He's like, this, I, oh, whoa, dude, damn. Sorry, this, I read ahead. I read ahead. I read ahead. Fuck? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm trying. Beppo pushed the door open before heading outside. There on the sidewalk was a turkey leg. He panted, rushing up to it, only to watch it move. Beppo attacked again until it moved once more. He started to get tired of not catching it. He then followed it because behind the apartments where it stopped, and he was able to chow down. He perked up when he heard a loud metal door shut. A man with with long purple hair laughed before picking up the cage. Silly puppy, this will be the last time you see your master. 
Looks like that. Wait, is that fucking- what was his name? Caesar? Caesar! Caesar! I literally had to look at the comments because I'm just like, I don't know anyone with long purple hair. I was like, which motherfucker works for Doflamingo with purple hair? He literally makes the fruit. How did I forget that? Huh? It, it, don't worry about it. It comes up in like Punk Hazard, which you're not close to because you're not watching One Piece right now! <laughs> Continue. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Continuing. Just, just give me a second. I gotta, I gotta, I really think about. Do you think Bebo will die? What are your predictions for this next chapter? I think they're gonna hold him hostage. For how much? How much money? What do you think? Are they gonna trade Bebo for Law? Ooh, maybe. Well, I mean, Bebo for kid. No, I think it's gonna be Beppo for Log. Like, he's like, oh, do you wanna see your pet alive? Well, then turn yourself in and we'll let it go. <laughs> Is it? I mean, the lo I mean that's yeah. his pet, but like. I mean, if someone was holding you hostage, I'd be like, well, that's my friend. I would, I would do it. <laughs> you'd, you'd give yourself up for me? Yeah, you have more pro like prospects than I do, anyway. So. Oh my God, <laughs> you're literally <laughs> married. He doesn't. He doesn't want to say yes to it. So technically not. Oh Wait, we gotta plan this. We gotta plan this. We'll plan this what, later. Are kidnapping? Wait, if you if you upload this, no. <laughs> We're gonna get kidnapped together. We're gonna plan this after because if anyone finds out our plan, it's not gonna work. Oh okay. What's I got your you. Plan? <laughs> we'll, we'll worry about it later. Okay. <laughs> Peppo whined. Peppo whined. His tail between his legs as the man tossed him into a white van. <sighs> no free, free turkey legs moving on the outside of the van. <laughs> <laughs> he held the whole way to the abandoned hospital. The man stopped him. The man stopped and opened up the back. He reached in, pulling out a cage and heading into the building. A woman stood with her green wavy hair <gasps> up in a ponytail. Welcome back, Caesar. She greeted. He nodded back as they headed into the building, and inside was a spotless clean room. There were tubes of different colors all over. Caesar put the cage up onto the metal table. Beppo was cowering in the back. He whined and he was shaking. Caesar laughed as Monet brought him a large syringe. He held it behind his back as he opened the cage. Beppo didn't budge from the back of the cage. Come on, boy. I'll let you go. I'll let you go back to your master if you come here, Caesar said. Beppo still didn't move. Caesar was growing impatient. He reached in, gripping the collar, and yanked him out of the cage. He scrambled to get away, but it was too late. Caesar struck him with a needle. He howled, which grew into a loud crying. Caesar gr grinned, pulling the needle out. Would Caesar- Does Caesar commit animal abuse in I the show? So. Yeah. I mean, he kidnapped a shit ton of children and experiments and on him, so I, there's a lot worse things that he's- Oh my god! Yeah, he like kidnapped a bunch of children, and then we're trying to make them into giants. So you just have these massive children. Pretty I'd beat shit. the heck out of this guy. Yeah. So I'm not picturing Beppo as like a little puppy. I'm picturing him as, like, just Beppo of this walking, talking polar bear and just, just pretends to be a dog <laughs> to, to, like, fly. <laughs> so, like, he's like, come on, get out of the back of that cage. And he's like, no. I was like, excuse me? Did that? Did you just say English? He's like, oh, I mean, bark, bark. <laughs> <laughs> bark, bark, growl, growl, whine, whine. <laughs> yeah. Just imitates dog noises and hopes to pass. <laughs> No, it doesn't even imitate the noises. He just goes bark, bark. Yeah, he's like, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> uh, anyway. Law woke the next morning to kids loud snoring. He crumbled, sitting up on his elbows and staring at him. His lips pressed into a line. Ink fingers ran down kids' nose, which stopped snoring and wrinkled. Law gave a small smile, crying again. He slipped his hand away before Kid could bat his hand. Law snickered as Kid tossed over, cracking open his eyes to him. Hello? Sanji called. They perked up as Law and Kid got up to meet Sanji. 
Got up, just saw Angie looking around the apartment. He turned to them, holding a bag. I was just checking to see if you guys were okay. Your door was open all night, Sanji said. We're okay. Kid got shot, and I just stitched him up, he said. He furrowed when he... he, he yeah, he furrowed when he noticed Beppo was in the house. He started to search his room and went into the kitchen, finding all that was left was his old bowl. Lao noticed the bloody paw prints leaving the apartment. Law grumbled. He pulled on his coat, following them outside. Law followed them behind the apartment building, where they just stopped. He sighed and looked around. Beppo! Law called. Law called out a few more times and gave up after then. Ah, there was no hide nor hair from the fluffy white dog. <laughs> now you got me picturing this big ass polar bear as a tiny white dog. <laughs> He sighed, standing before the footprints of dried blood. His eyes glanced over the road. He wasn't hit. There wasn't any blood or fur on the street. But Bud knew he couldn't go far. He wouldn't come he wouldn't come back home. I'll train him that way. Along with Corazon. Beppo wasn't just his pet. He was Corazon and Law's best friend. Corazon oh. found him for his thirteenth birthday, where they raised him until that winter. When Law clutched his fist, tears pricking the corner of his eyes. Kid stepped up next to him. His amber eyes glanced over to Law's saddened gray. He swallowed thickly, pulling down his sleeves and wiping away tears. Kid pulled him into his chest and placed his head on his shoulder. We'll find him, Kid said. We'll make some missing posters. Law didn't hesitate in embracing Kid. They headed back to the apartment, making a missing dog poster. Law and Kid then headed downstairs to the main floor to begin sticking up the posters. Hey, wait! Nami called. Oh, I love Nami. I forgot she was in this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah, she's a landlord! Oh, my God. I can't believe she's a landlord. Nami would never stoop so low as to be a landlord. Yeah, but she wants to exploit the poor, man. What better way is it to be a landlord? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, you're telling me in in this economy, Nami would not be a landlord. She would buy a shit ton of like apartment buildings and just charge a shit ton of money, and then raise the month, raise the the rent every like six months. <laughs> oh no, not my Nami. <laughs> Are we talking about the same Nami right now? <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> Okay. Hey, wait! Nami called. They turned to Nami, motioning them over. They walked up to the office, and she let them inside, where she played a video of last night. They watched Beppo leave the apartment and go outside, and then get pulled into a van. Law clenched his teeth. He thanked Nami as they were heading back up to the apartment. Law started to pull on his coat and hat before he opened the window. Where are you going? Kid asked. I'm going to get Beppo back. Law growled. I can't let you go alone. Probably a trick. Kid said. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Kid thrilled to put on his coat before Law and him left. They started to town and see the. They started to head into the abandoned parts of town. Do you know where we're going? Yeah. Exactly. Law snapped. They stood before an abandoned hospital. Law glanced up to the building in Burke Road. This is a hospital I worked at. I saved so many lives. I had taken just as many until I was fired because they knew it was part of that family. I came home that day and everyone was killed. Then he, he started experiments here. So mind your step. He'd followed in as he Kid followed in as he widened the skeletons that la that still skeletons still lied on the floor. Law stepped over them and down the hall, and there were screams and crying echoing in the hall. Kid followed after Law as he noticed all the experienced locked in the room. Some cried, some screamed, and some banged on the broken glass. Law took note of it to them. Beppo, Law called. Can't be here. He's just a dog, Kid said. He stopped and turned to Kid, 
who cocked an invisible eyebrow. He's not just a dog, he said. He's also a bear. <laughs> yeah, he's just a big ass bear. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you, you put that image in my head and it won't leave. I'm sorry. I mean, that's what I was picturing the entire time we were reading that Lox reader. It's just a it's just Babbo. Just big pretending to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That raised some brows, the law headed upstairs as the kid followed behind him. When he stopped at the second story, he was about to say something would not, would not put a finger on his lips. He was listening for something. <laughs> then he perked up before bolting to the door. He opened it, having kid stagger back. Kid watched as law skid to a stop before a door. He picked up a chain to, to the door. Kid walked up to him and pulled out his lock. He started picking the lock, but... He was having a hard time with his screaming and crying. Once the lock fell off, Sloth took no time to open the door. He perked up and his eyes went to a boy on the floor tied up with white hair and stunning amber eyes. Beppo? It muttered. Sloth cut off the ropes and pulled off his gag. The boy embraced Sloth as he embraced the boy back. Beppo started to cry and apologize. So Bebo, wait, Bebo's a kid right now. Is that what I'm- Well, not- Bebo's a child. Cause I think Bebo's a kid. That confuses my brain. I guess they just made- they just turned this animal to a- to a person. How- How big do you think Bebo is? <laughs> <It's> fucking huge! <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm thinking about person Beppo. I'm like, this kid can be- I mean, this child! <laughs> this child! <laughs> God damn it. This child can be like four feet tall, but now I'm just picturing like a nine foot man. <laughs> How tall is Beppo? Uh, he's like seven, the, he's seven little, feet. Is he a little taller than Law? I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's like maybe a head, <laughs> a head or two taller than Law. He's gonna tower over! I love this. I love this. This is great. <laughs> I love the imagination. Mm -hmm. It's all right. We need you to be. We need to be quiet now, or they'll hear you. Okay? Well, uh, Beppo nodded. That's Law held him close. He looked up a kid who was just. Why is he a boy? Kid asked. Kid, did it look like we could talk about this? Well, uh, sighed. As he and Law snuck out of the hospital. But it was just as. It was just as they got out the doors that there was a loud beeping. Doors and windows were starting to shut. Law got between the door before it shut. I can't hold this forever, Kid said. Law and Beppo got out as Kid was close to his slip out. But his arm got caught in the door, breaking it in several places. He cried out, pulling it out and glancing through his arm. Bent in all the wrong ways, broken bones stuck out of his skin, and his Holy blood shit. pulled out the wound. Law stood before him and Beppo on his back. Let's hurry and get home. I could probably still save this, Law said. What the I'm not gonna question fuck the medicine. Is going on? <laughs> they headed back to the apartment, where Kid left more of his blood in the hall of the apartment. Sanji was just leaving his apartment. Apartment when he saw the trio. Oh my god, what happened, <laughs> Sanji asked. Same. La, La approached him. I need your help. I know, I know you and I have bad history, but I need help saving Kid's arm. Sanji turned to Kid, wincing to hold, hold his arm as he turned back to La. Alright, if it helps. What? What? What is- Begin. <laughs> okay, what do you think will happen? I don't think they can save his arm. Well, in the actual One Piece, he does have a mechanical arm, so I feel like that's where it's gonna go. He's gonna have to cut it off. It's gonna be an amputation. Cut it off. Cut, cut it, it off. off. I think, yeah, but, like, treat it like he is in World War One. He just has, like, a cut on his, like, like in his finger. Get that like, big ah, in top of his arm. <laughs> yeah, like, like, damn, we gotta amputate an arm. Sorry about that. <laughs> they give him a bottle of whiskey, and yeah. they're ready. Here, drink this and gag onto this. You'll be fine. <laughs> if you think you're dying, you are. 
kid hissed as Law set him on the dining, yeah, the dining room table. Law removed his belt and buckled onto. Oh, buckled it to. Oh, they are gonna amputate it. <laughs> oh my God! Wait a. No. <laughs> <laughs> buckled onto his arm, earning his attention. What the hell are you doing? He hissed. During the time it took for us to get here, your arm has gotten worse, so I'm cutting it off. <laughs> yes, I said no. <laughs> Oh, you you what? <laughs> Sanji placed a gag in his mouth before getting a bucket and placing it under Kid's arm. Law and Sanji oh made eye contact god. as they knocked Kid. Oh my god, they just punched him or like you did like this? <laughs> oh my god, he's gonna wake up and be like, where the fuck is my arm? <laughs> they just take it, like, wait, use it to wave back at him. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's her, I'm sorry. When Kid woke up so next. <laughs> He looked for him. He looked to find his left arm gone. He just like looks up and is like just, like chilling on the on like a, on the couch cushion. <laughs> no, Sorry, they taxidermied his arm. <laughs> what are you so fucking fuck? <laughs> oh god! <laughs> All that s remained was a stump. <laughs> he growled, holding his shoulder. He noticed the time. It was 10.31 p.m. He perked up to the small figure who had crawled out of the chair across the room. Kid froed in the figure before it hopped up on his bed. Beppo sat at his bed and smiled. Is is this the polar bear or like... Is this I think the this human? is the child. Okay. I didn't know if they fixed them. <laughs> they, turn him, they fixed turn, him. Turn him back into polar bear. <laughs> You mean dog? Oh yeah, dog. That's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dog, quote-unquote. <laughs> he was worried about you, he said. What? Kid asked. Oh, oh the, the kid was speaking. I was like, who the fuck is talking? You can't say he when you're starting something, man. All these pretty poor guys. <laughs> the boy nodded. I'd never seen him like that. Only once before. Do you mind telling me? What the hell are you? Well, I was a polar bear and then I got turned into a human. <laughs> I mean, I was a dog. I'm not, <laughs> I was a dog. <laughs> you get me <laughs> all fucked up. <laughs> bark, bark. <laughs> Bubbo looked down at his orange jumpsuit. Oh my- see, he was just a polar bear pretending to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> pretending to be a boy. He's <laughs> <laughs> starting to fight with the button. He then glanced at the door before back at Kid. Kid glanced at the door as Beppo popped off the bed and approached her. Is he like walking on all fours or is he like walking like a person? I think he's I, walking like a person. I can't, because the way that they're phrasing it, it makes, I almost thought he was a dog again. <laughs> or a po whatever he is. <laughs> please, <laughs> it's please. Not, <laughs> it's not mine to tell, he said. Kid frowned as he got up and headed to the living room. His eyes almost fell out of his head, looking at all the blood smeared and the- Oh my god, they're gonna need so much carpet cleaner. <laughs> Dang, they gotta need to call a professional. Yeah. 1-800! <laughs> I was trying to remember the commercial. It's like, 1-800-35 and then you get new floors. Is it Empire? No, or I... which one? 888, uh... 588-2300, Empire. There it is. Yeah, there it is, yeah. They, the carpet installers. Yeah. I'm, I was trying to remember <laughs> the jingle. They're not sponsored. <laughs> yeah, hell no. Uh, Beppo walked. Good. Around it. And walked over to Law and taped- Oh, and tapped his cheek. He was sleeping on the couch. He grumbled and turned to Beppo and smiled. Law sat up as Beppo yawned and headed to Law's room. Kid growled- Frustrating, uh, frowning at law. You better tell me what the fuck's going on before I send your ass onto the street. Kid barked. Law sighed, running a hand through his hair before looking over at Kid. He patted the spot next to him, having Kid sent down next to him. About 13 years ago, Corazon and I went to Caesar's lab. We were all living happily with Doflamingo. We were just messing around with some chemicals, but it turns out we created something. Someone. 
Who was an accident? Peppo was created in that. What the fuck? <laughs> he just kept this human. Wait a minute. Beppo was created in that lab. We panicked and went through Caesar's books and turned Beppo into a dog. It wasn't until Oh my now. god. So it was a human pretending to be a dog pretending to be a polar bear. <laughs> That's correct. That's like the opposite of what we thought. Yeah. I like our headcanon. <laughs> I love it. I have headcanons of headcanons of fanfic. It was a human that was... Actually, accidentally turned into a polar bear that was just pretending to be a dog this whole time. Oh my god. <laughs> the conception. <laughs> Kid rested back against the couch. He slightly wrapped an arm around Law. Which arm? <laughs> oh, and, and put him into the <laughs> <laughs> Law, Law looked up at him and frowned. You want to take down Doflamingo, right? Kid asked. Y yes, Law asked. Then, he turned his head away, avoiding eye contact. If we take him down, then... Uh, forget it. Kid, tell me. You're just gonna <laughs> say to settle down and raise Beppo, I don't know. He shrugged. Law blinked as the kid pursed his lips. He then laughed, earning Kid's attention with a hue of blush across his cheeks. It's so funny, he barked. Law hummed. I'd like that. Then it's a deal. Let's take down Doflamingo. Beppo smiled as he watched Kid and Law kiss through the crack in the door. He stepped away from the door and crawled onto the large bed. He smiled, looking up at the ceiling. He held his hands up to the ceiling. You hear that, Corazon? He's gonna take care of me with Kid. Beppo smiled, curling up underneath the blankets and falling asleep. This is stupid, Kid said. Beppo had currently resided in the backpack made for kids, which sat upon Kid's back. Wait, how small is Beppo? <laughs> oh my god. Probably like maybe three or four. Wait, hold up. <laughs> He's wait. in a backpack. No, wait, wait, wait. This happened 13 years ago. They just said it happened 13 years ago. But he's small enough to fit in a backpack. And he's still a puppy. How old is this puppy? <laughs> it's a forever puppy. We'll yeah. leave it at it's that. Like a this kid's like four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's or four Pomeranian. <laughs> Why you ask? Bevel was too smart to get off a leash. And since he wasn't a dog anymore, he'd wander more. Shut up and wear it. Law said, snapping the buckle onto Kid's chest. Law patted Kid's chest before giving a thumbs up to Beppo. The boy cheered and bounced onto Kid's back, having him growl and holding his ground. Hey, knock it off back there, Kid barked. Beppo snickered as Law packed a backpack. He pulled it onto his back as they headed out. There at the park resided figures in the dark. A good handful, a few of Kid and Law's, Friends, Killer, and Penguin stepped out as they noticed Beppo in the kid's bag. Beppo! Look how cute you are! How old are you- Oh, finally, we have to figure out. Uh, Penguin asked. The boy held out fi five. Five! Five! <laughs> He's- Okay. Aged- is... Wait. He's oh, five! Oh, the aged in dog years. Oh. How- How- What's dog but years? That wouldn't work. Yeah, like one, one human year, seven dog years. Jeez. Maybe it's reversed. Like seven dog years is one human year. I, no wait, that's the same thing. Wait, like seven human years is equal one year my brain for the hurts. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> After we take down Little Flamingo, him and Kid are gonna raise me. Is he gonna, like, grow or no? I mean, he's been five forever, so... <laughs> Kid saw a killer smirk under his mask. He knew it. He just felt that smug... That smug, you've gotten soft look. Kid rolled his tongue in his cheek, glaring at killer. So you, the man who loves... Who says love is for wimps and drags you down, is finally settling down and raising a kid? Hmm? <laughs> killer asked. How'd you like your own... Wait, how'd you like to own a little of my foot up your ass, <laughs> Kid Crow? Beppo started to play with Kid's hair and chuckled. 
hair is like tulips. Unlike his hair, this is soft and smells better. <laughs> what is with that? Kid asked, looking up at Beppo. The boy blinked. With what? Why do you call Law him or he? Kid asked. Because he doesn't know what to call him. Oh, call me. Uh, Law said, going through a checklist. What do you mean? Well, I'm not his father, nor his owner, so I'm just- I'm just- he's, he's him right now. <laughs> he, he is him. He is him? Holy <laughs> shit! The meme! <laughs> he is him? And him is he. <laughs> we gotta read one of these. We gotta read the fake when we're hella drunk. Yes! <laughs> Next episode. I'll get plastered before this, and then I can't read anything. <laughs> No, you can call him Law, kid. It's like me calling you baby. Kid purchase lips. Okay, that does sound weird. People gathered as Law glanced at them and checked off their names. These were famous thieves. Some were undercover, some giving reports, and some learning. They were here to help take down Doflamingo. They've been waiting years for this, and now the time has come to take the plan to action. We start at dawn, Law said. <laughs> Oh my god, we right at dawn. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I just got the ad for some book that has this myth, the Alpha King. No! Oh my god, oh, oh yeah, you read on the- oh my god. I've been getting the I ads read on again. The what? You read on the phone. <laughs> yeah. I've been getting those ads again on TikTok, and I'm trying to, like, go right by them, because I know if I interact with one, I'm gonna get sent a lot. Oh, God. I, I don't have the strength to do it again. You have strength. I was- how do you think I feel? I was just rejected by the Alpha King! <laughs> <laughs> That's what the ad was! But, anyway. Kid and Killer walked up to the steps of the Donkey Quixote Mansion. They each held a large briefcase, dressed in suits and wearing sunglasses. The two men standing by the doors glanced to each other before before glancing to Kid and Killer. They stopped before the two men holding the suitcase tightly. We're here to transport Smile, Kid said. The two men nodded before opening the doors to the mansion. Once the door shut, Kid and Killer set down the suitcases and they quickly unzipped them as Kanji crawled out of one and Penguin stepped out of the other. And Kanji boosted Penguin up onto the ledge of the second floor before Kid and Killer helped Kanji up. How big are these suitcases? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Penguin and Kanji then disappeared onto the second floor. Kid and Killer quickly zipped up the bags with Joe Flamingo and Treble. Treble. Do I know Treble? Oh no, I know Wop. I know Waffle. I was thinking about Waffle, you know? Oh. From Drum Island. You'll get there. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Waffle. <Better. downstairs. laughs> <laughs> you must be here to transport the smiles with Duplamigo Grin. Kaido won't wait all day, Killer said. Upstairs, Sanji and Penguin stuck around, peeking into every room before find finding the room. They snuck, they snuck down a flight of stairs into an underground control room. We found it. Now what? Sanji muttered. He put the finger to his ear. Law sat in the truck, looking over the map of the mansion, trying to remember all that was there. Zoro and Smoker sat with him while Beppo sat on his lap. Under the stairs, there could be a control panel. When I tell you to, look the last three switches and the blue button in the middle. Sanji nodded and jumping down, sneaking past the guards and into the small room under the stairs. Sanji locked the door and waited inside. Penguin, I need you to pull out your phone and start recording what you see. Law said. Gotcha. Law looked out the window, watching the colors of the sky turn lighter before the sun started to break raised over the horizon. He waited until the sun was lifted into the sky, signaling it was morning. Many of the people in town were awake and walking around. Now, Zoro asked. Not yet. 
Then, when the clock chimed, Law turned back to the van and clicked on the monitors, where Zoro and Smoker type started typing away. Kanji, now, Law said. Kanji flicked the last three switches and then the blue button, where the lights in the mansion went out. Kanji perked up to Law's the Law's fact, sitting on the monitors. Attention, the people of Dress Rosa, Law said. Duflamin furrowed. Turning off. Turning to his TV, Sting Killer glanced at each other, holding briefcase full of smiles. Your king is the one he seen. Law held up for him file. He's a murderer, a killer, and a greedy king who has killed his own brother for betrayal. Then committed crimes. Then, oh shit, I can't read. Hold up. He then started crimes. making illegal dr crime. I can't believe him. <laughs> Duflamingo would never commit crime. Nah, he would get someone else to do it for him. <laughs> <laughs> then started making an illegal drug called Smile, which gives you an obscene amount of strength. But once it runs out, it drains your entire body and can kill you. Zora and Smoker, Smoker cut to Penguin's phone, recording the workers looking at the TV. They gasp as they turn to the general direction of where Penguin was. As you can see, He's enslaved people who have a debt towards him to make such a drug, which can also kill them as well. Duflamingo gritted his teeth and clutched his fist. While the town people were shocked about this news, they started to crowd the mansion and started to riot. It, riot. Zoro and Smoker started to record them live. As Law exited the van, he held a silver gun with a special bullet inside, one that could permanently keep him down but not kill him. Yet. Law jumped the fence and approached the mansion. He flung open the doors and pulled out the, pulled out the gun. Duflamingo chuckled, sitting in his throne chair. Sanji, Penguin, Kid, and Killer were all tied up. Trouble held the gun to Kid's head and chuckled. Drop the gun or your boyfriend gets it, Duflamingo said. Don't do it, Law! <laughs> Law growled and dropped his gun. Now kick it over here, Duflamingo <laughs> said. <laughs> Law, I don't give a fuck what happens to me. Kick his ass. <laughs> Kid barked. Trouble pressed the barrel of the gun harder on his forehead. Shut up, Law. You have to listen to me. I'll be okay. Just shoot him. I can't risk losing another important person in my life. Law said. Then he kicked <gasps> the gun over to Duflamingo. They chuckled as Trouble pulled the trigger. Law snapped over to them as Kid's head, head hung. Blood dripped from his forehead. Kid! Law cried. I told you, Kid hit. He raised his head. The bullet rolled off his forehead to the floor. Law's eyes widened before noticing the metal gapping on Kid's forehead. I would be okay, Kid chuckled. The flamingo pointed the gun. Picked up the gun, earning Law's attention. He pointed the gun at Law and grinned. Now you'll finally see your beloved Coruscant. Duflamingo said. He pulled the trigger, where the gun exploded in his hand, where Duflamingo growled as Law pulled out another gun from his back pocket. <laughs> I'm sorry, when did they see this other gun? What happened to the original plot of this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what I'm happened to the original plot of the movie? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm gonna as stupid as you think, Law said. He lined up the bullet the barrel to his chest and pulled the trigger, where the bullet zipped out of the gun and pierced Duflamingo's- Duflamingo, uh, Duflamingo's chest. He went falling to his knees and coughing up blood. Killer, it's your turn, Law said. The rope snapped as he went after trouble. Law stepped up to Duflamingo and tilted his chin with one of the toes of his shoes. Who is your own flesh and blood, Law seized. Then he kicked him across the jaw. Do Flamingo slumped on the floor. Kid put a hand on Law's shoulder. This isn't your fight, Kid. What? Oh. He turned to Kid, who was looking outside. Law turned to the townspeople, spitting curses and shooting out Do Flamingo. It, it's theirs, Kid said. <laughs> Hold up. Just let me, let me just compose myself a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bro, same. What the? I thought this was gonna be two thieves with trust issues learning to love each other. With a polar bear as a dog. <laughs> the gates burst open as the town people flooded the mansion and grabbed Ducomingo in trouble, taking them out of the mansion and down to town. Many of the people thanked Law and the others for helping. Law looked up to Kid and sighed. I think I love you, Law said. Kid flinched, his face a dark red, eyes wide, lips pursed in a line. Law took his hand and led him upstairs, where the Headed into what seemed to be a large bedroom. When ki kid looked at the bed, he figured it was Duplamingo's room. His bed was just as big as his living room. Kid sat on the bed and soon figured out it was a water bed and sunk into it. <laughs> La approached him for the first aid kit. He applied the bandage to his forehead. Why do you have a metal plate on your forehead? La asked. I was three and I fell out of a tree and cracked my skull open. So, I was taken to a shady doctor who gave me a metal plate on my forehead. Oh, and my jaw. The jaw? I thought I could eat a jawbreaker in one go. <laughs> Law side. I'm in love with an idiot. Kid hummed. Law straddled his hips and kissed him roughly. <laughs> Kid who was eager to return broke. Groping his ass with one hand, Law pulled back. <laughs> um, <laughs> give me a minute. God! I'm not laughing, I swear! <sighs> I'm gonna skip this line. <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> anyway. Actually, shit, this is by the line. Hold up. I wanna fuck you on this bed, Law said. <laughs> what? It's been three months now. Duflamingo has been taken into proper custody. Kid and Law have a Kid and Law have moved into a better apartment across town. Little Bebo was now able to grow up in a better town. Law was rehired as a doctor, while Kid became a mechanic in his own little shop where Beppo would would switch where Beppo would switch jobs. Learning about tools and being a doctor. He hasn't decided yet. Oh, speaking of deciding, Penguin and Killer have finally settled down or are getting married in the fall. Zanji and Zoro actually fell off the face of the planet. Fell off the face of the planet. No one's actually seen them since. Damn it! <laughs> Law stood at the window. The curtains blew in the air along with his shirt and his hair. He looked out into the horizon, watching the sun set into lovely pink purples and blues. He watched as Beppo poked his head out the window and smiled at the cool air. They noticed how most of the town was repaired quite quickly. Trafalgar, you're freaking me out. Get away from the window, Kid said. Law clicked his tongue before shutting up, shutting the window. He plopped on the couch next to Kid and Beppo, while Beppo crawled into his lap. Um, does he like to call you dad? Beppo asked. Law smiled. Sure. Boy smiled at the embrace. Kid cleared his throat, earning their attention. He tossed Law a small velvet pouch. Law opened it and turned it upside down in his hand. Inside his hand was a black ring with gold spots on it. Bebo pulled his hand down, looking at the ring. I had some extra money to spare for my robberies, and I was just I was discussing this killer about. Kid stopped himself, pursing his lips. About what, kid? Nothing. Never mind. Used it. Well, it was gonna happen eventually. I was thinking we could have a double wedding, or if that's too soon, we could plan something else. Law smiled and kissed his cheek. Penguin already told me. Kid growled. What? He said you were supposed to ask me sometime last week. I just wanted to hear it from you. Law slid the ring, slid on the ring, admiring it. You're a bastard, you know. But you love me. And, and Finn. It is finished. That is the end of the fic. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the original plot? I, f I feel like when this happens a lot. <laughs> when, when, we, when I read a fanfiction. You know, fiction. things happen. What can we do? Hey, you know what? That is so true. I, I kind of thought... I don't know, 
don't know. This happened in another fan fiction. It was it was also like we got halfway through it and whatnot, and then I read the other half, and I was like, what happens to the original plot? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> this is moving a little too fast. That, that was crazy with Beppo. He turned out to be a human disguised as a polar bear that was disguising as a, <laughs> as a dog. <laughs> And then it just all reverted back, and then Doflamingo was an asshole. I mean, he already was an asshole, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened- we don't even hear anything from Caesar. Caesar just gets away? Yeah, he just stabbed a puppy and then ran away. He just yeah, skipped just... down. <laughs> Is that- How do- how do I word this? Is that what happens in the show? I... No, I was gonna add to- that is- that is how I was gonna phrase it wrong. Is that just how Caesar works? I mean, he just kinda takes money from, like, overlords and powerful people and just, like, fucks off on the island and just does his own thing. And you I, said I, overlords. And I instantly thought that you were my- Has been. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, he's, and making, I was like, he's making deals with Alistair and, crossover. and, and uh, Vox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, big crossover. A crossover, 25 years in the work. <laughs> oh god. But, uh, what? Fuck it. This is a pretty good book. I recommend this. It's huh? Pretty, I recommend this book. Fucking... Nice. Yeah. You know what, it didn't make me, um, like, almost throw up, so that's a compliment. Oh. Oh god, you're still on that thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not gonna mention you should just what that is. You should just stop while you're ahead. You should just stop while you're ahead. Yeah. And that that's was... it. I feel like you know enough. But <laughs> anyway, those... you know what time it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's time for the wheel! I'm really hoping it lands on your choice. <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> I will you can take off the log, kid, now. Oh, wait, you're or... right. Because we finished it. Alright. Look at us. We're really getting through these. Alright, look at that. More likely of it to land on you. <laughs> ah, shit. <gasps> Mario, what's up? Okay, okay. Alright, okay. We see you. Oh, and we left off in a pretty good spot with that one. Yeah, like she just got on a boat and now she gotta live with the Yeah, it's just with a bunch of strangers. Yeah. She's gonna wake up every day and be like, Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if he does say, he'll remind her every day. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm very excited about the Usopp thing. I want to read more Usopp, just, just because Heisen hates him so much, it just brings me joy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love the loving- two opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, I love- uh, I love Usopp things. hater and Usopp lover. Yeah, I love things that people hate. It makes me different. <laughs> it makes you different. Yeah, except for like, like, Valentino. I hate Valentino. Nothing will ever change that fact. You're, and do flamingo. Don't forget do flamingo. Oh, yeah, no, I know flamingo you hate do flamingo. You know what's funny? When I ever get those character things on like TikTok of like d this fandom, like One Piece, like which character uh, do you get to date based on your month? And I get to like my month, and it's always fucking do flamingo or some dog ass character. I'm like, why? <laughs> hey, hey, you got Kobe in one of them. Yeah, I mean he's an okay person. Not my fave, fave, but. I know you treat me right, I think. <laughs> uh, same thing with has -been. I would get to my month with those things, and it would be like- You should me them. Yeah, I should. I always get fucking Valentino, like, why did you do this? Oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> I don't know, I always, I always get jealous when I see the box thing before my month shows up, and I'm like, fuck, I'm not getting box. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Alright, well, oh, maybe we can add it to the wheel sometime. A Vox X reader or some of the Hasman stuff since it's getting popular. Uh, true, and, I, and I'll understand the references. Yeah. 
Well, I'm thinking now since the, there's an actual show now and not just a pilot, they'll have more source material so they'll actually write a book about, mm -hmm. like, the ships or something like that. So, I don't know. I'm very excited. I, I want to read more Vox stuff. And, and other characters. It's not, it's just not Vox. It's, it's, it's just... Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> other characters. Yeah, other in quotes. You mean Vox and, and Vox? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Adam. <laughs> Was... You. <laughs> well, wait, hold up. Hold... You. Huh? I said Adam. <laughs> Adam? Yeah. You choose an Adam? Bro, did you see him without the mask on? <laughs> he just looked like some guy. I mean, yeah. He's just, <laughs> He's just a guy. People were making dream references with him. He's like, he took off the mask. That's what the mask. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, they have hella box victory here on what bed <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah, maybe. We'll, 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 oh, you, you want Alistair and Vox? They got that too. Dude, I'm reading a book like that on AO3 right now. <laughs> oh my god. We're a detective in 1920s, and our partner Ow. is Vox, and we're trying to, to solve the murders of Alistair's, like, killings. Mm -hmm. Crazy shit, and then, like, Vox is awkward, and, like... Well, he doesn't know how to, like, flirt and whatnot. So, it's- it's- it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know how Alistair ties in for us being shipped with him, but it's- we'll figure it out. Very interesting concept of, so. like, will you go down the path of the killer, or stay on the light path and date your coworker? <laughs> <laughs> I'd go for the coworker any day. So she said it's Vox, man. Also, oh, Alistair's asexual, aromantic. He doesn't want to do with relationships. <laughs> I mean, whoa, 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 wait, wait. It just meant no attraction on, like, the basis of, like, romance or sexuality. It doesn't mean, like, yeah, they don't want ace. a relationship, period. Well, I mean, arrow ace is just, like, they, they, they want, like... I say like they. I'm like, I'm like I'm asexual. I don't have to like <laughs> say it like that. But like um, they're more into like uh, what is the word? It starts with a P. Platonic. That's platonic. It. More platonic relationship. Like they care about their friends and family, but they just don't desire like a companion, like a a soul partner or companion. Like they're mm -hmm. fine with their friends and families and and those kind of relationships, but not like. Not like an actual one, like boyfriend, girlfriend, or nothing like that. You you learn something new every day. Anyway, we got a bit from one piece. As we do, as we do. Anyway, thanks for joining me, Jolene, on this one. It was one hell of a time. Thank you for giving me therapy right before we started this. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I anytime, that. anytime, Betsy. Yeah, and then uh, check the book out in the description along with the playlist of all the other Wattpad book club shit that I've done with other people. There's some gems in there, I think. There's probably at least like 10 good ones in the whole playlist. 10 out of 100! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like a 10% success rate, man. <laughs> That's good, I think. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned for more every Tuesday and Thursday. See you guys later. Bye! <laughs>